Hello students and family members, it's Mr. Panza. Tonight, I'm hoping that you can take some time to look at this assessment review sheet for social studies on why these cultures started to trade. First of all, you need to know the specific continents that were trading. Those three continents were Europe, Africa, and Asia. What I was hoping the students would do was notice these numbers in parentheses and then write Europe, Africa, and Asia, I'm sorry, Asia, then Africa as it's listed here. The reason we need to point this out is because we talked specifically about how during the 12 to 1300s and a little bit beyond, nobody really knew about the Western Hemisphere. Everybody was over here on the Eastern Hemisphere, but it was still a big deal that Africa, Asia, and Europe were all trading together. That's because then Africa, Asia, and Europe began to share ideas and cultures and learning, which eventually led to a renaissance and then also eventually led to those individual countries starting to think about traveling west, which is what we'll get to next, looking for a sea route to Asia. But right now, all we had to focus on was the fact that Europe, Asia, and Africa began to interact on this place called the Silk Road back and forth through trade with each other, and then we needed to focus on why we would trade. One of the first explorers we had discussed or talked about was Marco Polo. He was a European explorer from Italy. He was a merchant, and I told the students they could find this information on page 84. That job is someone who buys and sells goods to earn money. So in this case, he was coming from Europe, and he would travel to Asia. He would jump on the Silk Road, which is not a road at all, but we'll discuss that in just a moment. He'd get to Asia, and he learned a lot. In fact, he spent 16 years over there. You'd have to spend 16 years over there because it took him three years to travel to get to Asia. When he came back to Europe, he opened the eyes of so many different people because he explained what he saw over there and the multiple different things that he was learning over and over. And then people began to want to travel and trade as well. And what road did they use? It was the Silk Road. The Silk Road was not just one road, but it was a series of trade routes between Europe and Asia. Merchants traded goods especially Chinese silks. That's why it's called the Silk Road. They hoped that they would earn a profit. As we continue to talk about different explorers, Mansa Musa was one we had discussed. He was the king of Mali. He was considered a great king, and he was a Muslim ruler. He traveled to Mecca and set up trade agreements with the cities that he saw there, and brought scholars and artists back when he returned, which is obviously what's going to happened during the Renaissance as well, those scholars teaching new things throughout. Different technologies were discovered during this time of travel and trade as well. Now, I only ask for one specific technology, but I've listed the ones that we have discussed so far. Navigation, the astrolab, and a compass. All of these made exploring easier because it helped sailors use that technology Tell them either how far north or south from home they were or which direction they were going. Navigation was the science of planning and controlling the direction of a ship. Astrolab is a tool that measures the height of a sun or star above a horizon. And the compass actually goes one step further, which was an instrument that always pointed north because it had a magnetic needle and didn't need the sun or star above a horizon to determine that fact. If you flip it over to the back, we start talking about the Renaissance. The Renaissance means the rebirth. Specifically, it's a period of time in the 1300s to the 1400s in which all of the sudden value was placed back on learning and knowledge. The reason learning and knowledge were emphasized in this time of the rebirth or the Renaissance was because those cultures, Asia, Africa, and Europe, were trading different things that they had learned and different knowledge that maybe they didn't know based on other cultures. New interest in writing, art, science, and ideas of ancient Greeks and Romans, as well as the other cultures such as Africa and Asia and Europe, became important again, and so many people were learning because of it. Why do people explore? Now, I did tell the students that these bottom two questions were really opinionated type of answers. However, the main thing we had discussed, the main answer to the question, why were these cultures trading, was the fact that they were looking to trade 
their goods for goods that either they wanted or goods that they needed. So to get a little bit more specific and to give you an actual example is if they found new goods that they wanted or needed, they would travel and trade to go get it. The example would be the African Kingdom of Ghana. They had lots of gold and they would willingly trade that gold to the Arabians who would cross the Sahara Desert because the Arabians had something that Ghana didn't have and that was salt. You may be thinking salt's not a big deal but was used to preserve food and if you were able to keep food healthy and safe to eat for a long period of time then of course people were ready and willing to trade some of their own personal wealth for it. Ghana would trade their wealth and gold for that salt and people would think of their kingdoms as strong because they opened up trade routes. Now some of those places would stop the trade based on the ruler, but eventually it would continue to grow and expand. And as I mentioned, soon it will expand in a sea route looking for Asia headed west. For now, just write down all of these answers and try and study some tonight. It will be helpful during tomorrow's quiz. Hope this video helps.